hey, the purposes for this video are for entertainment and criticism. Take it, leave it, you do you. This video is not to give you an excuse to harass or bully the user in question, so do not treat it like it is. We do not condone witch hunting or harassment, so don't do it. Thank you, and enjoy the video. Hello everybody, I'm Yuji. And I'm Muffin. And welcome back to another video. Today, we got a Vokino Hero character for you. <laughs> Muffin just gave an exasperated sigh. I, this is the first time I'm seeing this. I want to hold off judgment for a little while. Her hero costume is, is she like, is her top a cutoff? Like, is that like her skin, her belly? Or I can't exactly tell what's going on. Yeah, I still can't tell if that's just part of her shirt or if that's her skin color. Or it looks kind of similar to her skin color, but maybe it's just part of the shirt. I think it is just part of the shirt, if I'm looking at it. And honestly, I just don't think the colors look very nice together, if I'm being yeah. completely clear. Like, being a Boko no Hero, like, OC, like, you can there's a, a, yeah, you can get away with a lot. It's ridiculous, like, what you can do with that universe. So, like, yeah. a lot of this I actually don't mind, like, a whole lot. But, like, there's still aspects of it that I just look at and I'm like... Yeah. Like, the colors in the hair I don't mind, but the way you put the colors in the hair like that I mind a lot. Like, having one ear green and one ear blue and, like, random stripes, like, just kind of appearing out of nowhere. That I don't like. Like, again, you can get away with a lot in the Boku no Hero universe, but, like, hair colors still follow kind of, like, what you would usually expect. Like, if you have blue stripes in your hair, they don't appear just, like, halfway down the hair, and there's, like, green halfway up the hair. I was gonna say, but you have to look at Kaminari and his black stripe of hold hair. Hold up, hold up. And, uh, Todoroki's sister. She literally has red little bits in the middle of her hair. Well then, hmm. I just don't like the placement either way. Like, I still think the placement is a little weird yeah. to me. Like, it looks like the colors are nice because they're nice, beautiful pastel rainbow colors. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm a sucker for pastel rainbows. So like, in general, it's nice. But I think with a lot of the other aspects of this character, it just kind of makes a mess of things. Mm -hmm. The cat ears, I'm not gonna lie, I do not like. Her quirk could explain it, but I feel like are like a mutate quirk. Wait, so a she's part bunny, part cat, and part sparrow? Uh, no, her, um, her quirk is she can transform into an animal or just part of an animal, but she has to be involved in the animal's death of some way, like some way, in order for her to be able to transform into the animal. But I think the cat ears are just always there. That's what bothers me. Like, if they were just a normal part of her, like, shapeshifter quirk, then I wouldn't mind it, but like, they're just there to be there. Yeah. And like, while on one hand I don't mind it, on another hand, like, it kind of bothers me. Because like, it, it doesn't say here like, oh, she's part animal, her quirk is shapeshifter, it just says quirk shapeshifter. So like, like we have several people in the Boko no Hero universe who are animals, but like have a different type of quirk. Yeah. To Tokoyami, for example. He's, but it kind he's... of makes sense, you know? Mm -hmm. This one, like... It makes sense considering her quirk, but at the same time, it's just kind of like... But she why? has a lot going on. I'd like, I think it's a little bit too much. Not overpowered, but just like too much. Yeah. And I don't really, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like the one black eye and the one white eye. Like, that's just always been a thing. What? Do you see her iris is black oh in that one gosh. and that one's not? Or the whites, not the iris. But either way, like, that bothers me a lot. I would prefer if both eyes were black or both eyes yeah. were white, not one and the other. I don't know. It just, it's just a personal thing that bothers me because this character has a lot going on as it is. The heart birthmark? I think that is kind of bothers me as well, but I can, I can let it slide. Like, that's not like yeah. a huge deal. I just, like, to me, there's, again, you can get a lot, you can get away with a lot in the Boku no Hero universe, but it comes to a point where it's like, this is too much. Like, Boku no Hero, like, the characters, the creators have a way of, like, putting a lot of weird stuff in it, but, like, it it's enough to the point where it's not too much. There's not a character that I look at and I'm like, there's too much going on with this character, I just don't like him at all, I don't like her at all, there's too much. 
Yeah. Like, they, they don't do that. They know their limit. This person obviously didn't know the limit. And they're like, what all can I throw in this character? Oh, I love animals so much. What if she can transform into every animal as long as she touches her blood or whatever? Oh, what if she has cat ears? What if she has all these different, like, colors and all this stuff? What if her, uni like, superhero uniform makes no sense, literally? It's hard for me to take this character seriously because of, like, the drawing, the, the fact that you didn't spell school right, like, there's a lot going on here that just makes me feel like this is a troll. I'm going to be honest about that. Yeah, but we're treating it seriously because nowadays you can't tell if they're trolls or not because the trolls turn out to be serious people <laughs> and serious people turn out to be trolls. It's a mess of everything. Mm -hmm. So like, I prefer to treat them serious until proven otherwise because then we get a laugh out of it either way. Shall we move on? No, wait, I want to talk about the art first. Artwork obviously needs work. The hair looks weird, the hands on the school uniform and the normal like casual uniform are strange to say the least and the anatomy of the like legs and everything is just odd. This is why tutorials are great. Considering your anatomy is, let's be honest, not great, I do think you did well with the details on the school uniform. Yeah, you did, you did a good job. You still did a good job, it's just your anatomy needs work. Tutorials, anatomy tutorials in specific will help you a lot. They will do good. And as for the little animals, like, you did pretty good, I will admit, but that does not look like a cat. I, oh, I thought it was a monkey at first or something. I thought it was like a weird fox raccoon hybrid creature thing. The face almost looks like, yeah, raccoon. <laughs> yeah, like the muzzle is too short basically. And like, there's no neck. It's just all a body. You did decent on the hind legs and then the front legs are just sticks. Yeah. So also look at like animal tu drawing tutorials. You, there can, you can find simple, simple ones all over the internet. Like mm -hmm. it's not that hard. But other than that, like you did a pretty decent job. There's a bunch of information off to the side, but I think all of that is repeated in the bio. So I'm just not gonna, I'm just gonna look at that. We're just gonna scroll down and uh, pretend like it's not, it's not existent. Okay, peeps. So I did a sheet for Omoyaki uh, Fen because it's rare old one C so so old. And I'm so proud of this. ITS so perfect. I hope and ye I'm gon gonna write the info again. She has a link to the old one. Yep. That was hard to read. Yeah. Spell check is your friend. My friend. Definitely. <laughs> like... If you don't have spell check or anything, if you have if you have to type into like not a word document, an application where it doesn't really do spell check for you, like go to Google Translate, put it into Google Translate, and just have it speak it out to you. And usually that's a good way to pick up like, oh, I didn't spell that right. Oh, this sentence sounds clunky. That's a pretty good thing. And then you can also send it off to friends, and they can like proofread it for you. Yep. And I am doing this for the second second tie because it closed but free. Anywhere, okay. Name oh, oh my yeah, oh, oh, my oh name oh my key, Kiki Yagi. Nicknames Kiki, Kiki, Kitty, Kitten. Here, name slash real name, Anime. Anime. I actually don't mind that. I actually like it. Like, to be honest, I actually really do like this character. Like, she needs work clearly, but I don't know. She's got she's earned a soft spot in my heart. I actually like her. <laughs> So you took our bio template. One thing we've said about our bio, like bio templates in general, is they're good. Like we use templates too for our stuff, but like we have, you know, hero name or villain name. You need to decide. Okay, is my character a hero or a villain? Take out the other one and just put like hero name and a me. Uh, age thirteen, gender female, sex female. I think they put the question mark there because they didn't understand why it was listed like that. They think they're the same thing. Like, oh, these are interchangeable. Why is it listed twice? So if they are interchangeable for your character, just delete or like conjoin gender and sex. Sexuality. She doesn't know. Yeet. <laughs> Appearance description. The picture. No, that is not good enough. Because, like, there's things in the picture we can't understand. Like, that heart shape thing. Is it just a tattoo or is it something they draw on? Is it a birthmark? What? Ah, describe the clothes to us because we can't tell what's going on. Ah! <gasps> Muffin Day. How tall is she? That kind of stuff. You don't go look at the picture. The picture is not enough. Hero slash villain abstract. Ah. The picture. Oh my good lord. Not gonna repeat all that. Muffin is upsetty spaghetti, everybody. 
personality. She is mostly happy and really likes jokes. She is protective and wants everyone to be happy. She gets jealous and likes her to be around someone all the time. She also wants everyone to be happy and not alone. You already said that. She is very positive and likes to throw look on the positive things in bad places. She tries a lot and wants to be the best. Quirk. Include what their quirks does when they reach the limit and draw back to their quirk. Delete the explanation. <laughs> that was Please. just for you to know what we mean by like what we wanted a quirk description. Shapeshifter. She can transform full or partly into an animal. But before she can transform into an animal, she has to be somehow involved in it death. Not killing, but being involved somehow. Or Well, it does say she has to get some of the blood on her sin, and then she can transform at NY time. I don't like the any time part. Like, I feel like that should- I should feel- I feel like it should be more like Tomiki. Like, he has to eat that thing he wants to transform into every day, because it gets out of his system. Mm -hmm. event, like, at the end of the day. Yeah. I would prefer it if it was like that, because if she could just do it any time after, like, getting animal blood or whatever it is on her like let's say she goes to a museum trips off a piece of a t-rex and eats it she's just a t-rex forever now yeah that does feel a bit too overpowered like even if it's a, like oh she's ended school she's trained to grow her powers that still seems overpowered very maybe it could like that's why again i suggest the ingesting blood, maybe depending on certain amounts, she can hold it for days and See, that's what I like. Like, if she guzzles a gallon, boom, you're a kitty for, like, a week. But if it's just, like, a little drop to quickly win a fight, you're a squirrel for an hour. I like that better. Yeah, see, that's- that's what I mean. Like, while it's- like, the quirk itself is interesting, I like it. It's just, it needs tweaked to make more yeah. sense and not be so ridiculously stupid overpowered. Yeah. I don't mind ridiculously stupid stupid overpowered quirks. All of might. All for That's one. That's true, but like, but like with this, those, there are drawbacks. Yeah, this and this has no drawback. Yeah, especially with the like, oh, she ingested, boom, forever. Like, there's no drawback to that. That's what bothers me. Uh, so here are all the animals she ever transformed to. Cat. She can have cat paws and tail, ours, and even whiskers if she wants to, but her, she doesn't do that often enough she can transform into a full cat. I- this doesn't really explain, like, why she has it. Was she born with the cat ears? I'd assume so, because if you go back up and look at the picture, all the animal parts are different colors, yeah. but the ears are the same as her hair. So I assume she was born with the cat ears which again it kind of bothers me a little bit but you know what like if her quirk were pur purely some like in some way shape or form just cat related like it I makes, think sense. That makes sense but, but this like, is like animal kingdom yeah so i don't understand why it purely was cat ears unless like her hair well even then yeah i don't know I don't know either, my, my dude. Uh, Limit, she gets distracted easily when she is in her cat form for too long, and she starts acting more like a cat the more she is in some part cat. That still isn't very, like, much of a drawback. And drawback. then there's another drawback. When she's a cat, she can't fight much because she is small. Yeah, I feel like the quirk itself needs a drawback. Yeah. Like, like, I kind of do like the she starts to become more of the animal as yeah. time goes on. Like, I would like it if, like, oh, like, she's, she guzzles a lot of blood, she's good to be a cat for a fight. But, like, if she lets herself be fully, like, become the cat, she's stuck as cat. Until, until uh, the, it ends. Until the cork wears off. I which, would like that. Yeah, I think that's a good drawback. It still retains to the character itself, like, and what we already have written here, but it actually, like makes yeah. more sense with it and maybe she could also get sick if she drinks too many different bloods at once like let's say she tries to guzzle bird cat and rabbit blood all at the same time to get all of those quirk powers maybe it makes her ill maybe because i mean let's be honest even with a blood related quirk like that you gotta get sick of that <laughs> eventually like uh how she saw the animal die she one wandered out of the orphanage she oh of course she's an orphan uh she was at and she got lost and saw a cat and it started going towards her across the street and a car hit it we're not gonna read the full story i don't want to deal with that me i don't like the idea of like oh she has to be involved in their death and drink their blood like for me it would make sense more if it was just oh drink their blood like the involved in their death 
part just seems a bit like edgy or like oh for the sad points you know yeah that's exactly what i thought when i first read through this uh sparrow she can have wings or fully transform into a sparrow limits she can't fly for long because she f gets dia and what and is also really hungry she also isn't the best at controlling it yet and can't fly too good and sometimes bums into things and also she gets a little dumb she if she is she uses it to judge and she what she thinks her reflection is another person of she uses it for too long i'm gonna be honest i didn't like that for me that made no sense like the cat okay like yeah it had its own drawbacks because like oh if you're just a regular house cat obviously you're not big it's not terribly well to fight like it's good for like maybe sneakily creeping into a minion's base or something but like yeah but this was just like I don't know. That didn't make sense to me. I didn't like it. I thought it was kind of meh. Yeah. Like, if you just le left it as like, she's not very good at flying, that, I would have been like, okay. Drawbacks. Uh, drawbacks. Test spare form is not good for fighting as well as her wings. It's mostly for mobility. But yeah. you did say she could transform herself into part of the animal. Yeah, like, so like you could in give yourself, picture. like, the talons or something. Yeah, like, uh, the talons and the wings, or, like, the claws for the cat. The beak. The beak. You know, like, you make it sound like in this description she can only fully transform into the animal, which... You can't see what I'm doing with my hands right now, but... Ah! Yes, tears angrily. Uh, how she saw the animal die. Once she was in her cat form for too long and she really got this since she wanted to kill something, and there was a sparrow, so she tried it and she killed the sparrow and then realizes what she did. I don't know, maybe that I'm okay with because that does go along with the thing of like, oh, like... She if becomes the animal. She becomes the animal, I'm okay with that. Bunny. She can have bunny ears, bunny legs, tail, and whiskers. Uh, limits. Again, she can't fight much in her, in her full binny form. She also has to eat vegetables. Why doesn't your character pick better animals? Like, seriously, you're if you're a hero, you could probably go to a zoo and be like, Hey, this is my quirk. I need some animal blood. Give me that lion. Mm -hmm. Or that elephant. Or that giraffe. Give me the spotted zebra. She also has to eat vegetables and salad stuff if she's a bunny for too long. Or or she is gonna faint. How she saw the animal die, I don't know yet, sorry. Ugh, question mark, question mark, strength. She doesn't give up and she can inspire others and she's good at close combat. How? All of the animals you just listed, you're like, not good at fighting, not good at fighting. She seems like a backup kind of hero, not a fighter kind of hero. How is she good at close combat? Like, honestly, she sounds more like an underground stealth hero, yeah. like Eraserhead. Yeah. Like, she's used specifically for transforming into animals and sneaking into villain hideouts. Yeah, and like, maybe you could say, oh, during her time at the academy, like, they trained her for close combat, but like, my counterpoint to that is like, all the teachers would realize your quirk is better as just being back up, like, sneaking to the base, that kind of stuff, like, spy material kind of stuff. Why would we teach you that kind of stuff? We would teach you escape mechanisms. We would teach you how to pick better animals. We would teach you how to use your animals. Like, to me, like, maybe basic close combat stuff in case you get caught. But I don't think, like, they turn it to be, oh, like, this is your main thing. You're great at close combat. That doesn't make sense. Like, unless she herself decided she wanted to get better at close combat. But again, we, you just stated, all of her animals that she transforms into are shitty at fighting. And she is a 13 year old girl. Uh, she's good with people and teams. Weaknesses, she gets distracted easily and is clingy and annoying at times. She isn't good with long combat and realized awesomely on her, on her strength. She's a 13 year old girl. What do you mean, she, and her quirk is not strength related. What do you mean she relies mostly on her strength? How big and muscular can this 13 year old girl be? If we go back up to the picture, she has twig legs. She's a, she's a tiny person. Uh, she gets distracted in fights when sure enemies talk with them and sometimes trust people too much. How did she, how, like, why did the academy accept her? I'm gonna be honest, her quirk, I do not enjoy it that much. I don't, right now as it is, I don't think it's that good. She's not good at fighting. I really don't see what she has to bring to the table. Class 1A? How did she make enough points to get class 1A? Like, even if they're just rescue points, I feel like, honestly, they would eventually kick her, like, 
down to class 1B or maybe even 1C or something yeah, like that. Especially like, oh, she gets distracted when fighting the enemies. Like, all those practice stuff, she gets distracted. They would be like, you can't make it as a hero, like, doing this. Especially you not in class 1A, it. like... Ah, uh, and sometimes trust people too much. She would... is just she she has the main character lovable kind of personality, but you're not doing it very well. Uh, likes aing with other people, strawberries and watermelons and carrots. She actually like other food as well, but the this are her favorite. She likes birds a lot because they fly. She likes when people like her and their attention. She likes cute things and dresses. When someone pets her or compliments her appearances, not appearance. She also likes it when people ask her about her ears because she likes to tell people about it. Like how they work, how it is living with them, etc. She also likes to talk about her quirk, especially the different animals. Candles and parfumes because they smell nice. Aesthetic stuff and cutesy stuff in general. I do have to say, while I didn't like the spelling and the general format of your sentences, I do like that you gave her a lot of likes. The personality section was short and not very much. So, like, stuff like likes and dislikes kind of help you figure out what kind of person a character is. So, I do have to admit I liked how many likes and dislikes you gave them. Uh, dislikes e egotistic people and being alone. She can't stand eating potatoes. She dislikes dogs as well. What? She- I can't like this character. Uh, just because she's a Neko- Not, not just- Not just because she's a Neko, lol. Uh, she doesn't like spelly paces because of the smell. She doesn't like drawing because she can't draw at all and it annoys her when she gets angry and yells. You know, the fact that she dislikes dogs is a huge drawback to her yep. quirk. Like, you could use dogs. Dogs can be so powerful. Yeah. yeah. And, like, you see dogs everywhere. Like, strays and oh, stuff no. like that. So, you like... You can see dogs dying everywhere. I don't like that thought. Oh, yeah, that actually... No. Yeah, but, like... Like, that's actually a giant drawback to her quirk. Dogs are everywhere. Mm -hmm. Gee, that'd be great for stealth missions. Relationships. Friends. Almost everyone from class 1A. Her, if, if this is, like, the same kind of 1A as in the show, not just like, oh, this is like... You're, you're gonna hate it. Kaminari and Ashido. No. Her kind of personality. I'm going to be honest. Like, yeah, there's a lot of people in class 1A that, like, they're friendly people. They would be friends with her. But there are several people in class 1A that, like... I think her personality would annoy the shit out of them. Bakugo. Oh, Bakugo would hate he Oh my gosh. Okay, almost everyone from 1A, I can assume you're meaning not Bakugo, but still, there's several people that like, maybe they'd be friendly towards her because it's like, oh, I don't want to make friends in school. Not, I don't want to make enemies in school. But like, I guarantee her personality is the kind of personality that would clash with a lot of people. She is a lot with Kaminari and Ashido. She all she is also friends with some people from class 1B, like Kendo Pony and Ibarra. Oh, I love Pony so much. Enemies. Uh, he doesn't really have any enemies except for the uh, villains. She doesn't like Momo too much. Why? I love Momo too much, but they aren't enemies. Family. All Ice is her stepdad. No. I'm gonna pretend you didn't make this character like she is, make her friends with literally everyone in the universe, and also make Ar All Might her father. Crushes- she really likes Kaminari, but honestly she gets a crush on almost everyone though. Kaminari. Kaminari is still the best. Significant Other Wait, was... doesn't have one yet. Oh, uh, the backstory. She actually wrote a pretty decently long backstory, but honestly with how the spelling has been going, I weep for you. <laughs> Occupation student? That's not, there's no question marks there. Occupation would be her. If she's just studying, isn't in her like lifetime job yet. Student. Backstory. All oh, um, all Omaki uh, ever knew is being in Te Orphanage, but she never myob did much. Nobody ever adopted her though, and she didn't really knew why. Shiji thought she was a good kid, but apparently others didn't. The other kids ignored her a lot as well, when one day she heard one of them say to a new kid there, The workers told us to be careful about the rainbow-haired girl, so don't talk to her much, okay? So did the workers told them not to talk to her. Uh, she didn't get it. Why would they do that? She knew that she looked a little different, but she didn't mind it much. But can it be why they would not let her be with the other kids? I'm gonna say right now, that is absolute 
bullshit. Sure, she looked a little different. She looks no different than any other character on like in My Hero. Like, let's take Ashido, Tokoyami, um, ooh, what are some characters? I'm gonna throw a bunch of characters up on screen right now, like, yeah, she's a bit excessive for the universe, but yeah. honestly, she doesn't look a whole lot different compared to these other characters here. You've got a guy that has mist for a head. Don't give me that, oh, the people told her not to talk to her because she's different. No, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, I can understand some of what people might bully her, like, hey, your quirk's weird, you look strange, but like, having, like, the adults, like, I always tell everyone, you know, don't hang out with her, she's different in this universe i don't think makes sense at all it doesn't it really doesn't so omaki was mostly alone when she was little but she didn't mind she would just always go around the garden or building and play with herself she was always curious and wanted to know what her quirk was the other kids got their quirks already and she didn't get why she didn't have one yet the workers didn't pay much attention to her either and that's why she was able to run away from the orphanage Run away from the orphanage. It wasn't really a runaway. She just wanted to look outside. She was out six at the time and got lost. On her way, she saw a cat on the other side of the street, and the talk started crissing the streets to go after her. But a car hit it. She then took it back to the orphanage and buried it under a bush. But the door was already locked, and she didn't know how to get in. She found a hole in the fence, but couldn't get there anyway because she was too big. When she suddenly transformed into a cat, uh, from that day. She thought her quirk was to transform into a cat. And then the full story, which we're not gonna read, no. Nope. <laughs> then she then started using her quirk more when once the kids caught her in her cat form. They didn't know it was her and they were really interested in her. Then the kids named her Cookie and played with her a lot. Even took her inside and slept with her in their bed. She really liked the tension so she would be in her cat form a lot. No one really noticed her human form being away because she was playing by herself anyway. But. Ater realized that the longer she's in her cat kata form, the more cat-like she is. She once got the urge to kill, so she went outside to look for something. She found her sparrow and her instincts kicked in and she killed it. She then realized why she did why she did and transformed back into her mana and took the dead bloody bird in her hands and buried it. She then went by her day as normal. One thing she did eye on her cat form is go away from the orphanage a lot because of the because of the hole in the fence once when she did she what what once when she did so she got chased by some wild dogs Okay, okay so maybe this explains why she doesn't really like dogs chased her into a corner and she got really scared and wished she could fly suddenly she didn't feel her paws but wings she tried to fly and somehow managed it uh, she crushed she crushed somewhere and uh, take a moment to realize what happened she then re realized that she turned into Sparrow, like the one she accidentally killed a few days ago. She just sat there for a while, like a little bird, trying to figure out why. Maybe she could transform into an animal that she killed? She didn't know, but that, but now that she thought about T, her kata form looked a lot like the cat she once saw die. Maybe that was it. She had to be somehow involved in her death then? It was getting late, so she decided to turn back into a cat and go back to the orphanage. She cold, coiled, never figured out the quirk thing totally right, but as time went by, the kids from the orphanage started to ignore her less. The orphanage then got them a bunny one day, and the kids took care of it together. No, the bunny, poor bunny. Um, Omaki also sometimes transformed into a cat because the kids were still used to Omaki not being uh, with them, and they would make cookie. Uh, and the bunny play together. One day a new kid came into the orphanage. She was really quiet and didn't talk much. The workers told the kids, including Omaki, to be careful around her. But Ki didn't want to do that because she knew how it was being left alone. So she went to talk to her. I, this is painful to read. Uh, she would ignore her a lot. But so then the new girl started talking to her a little. They both would sometimes stay out late. And one day Omaki decided to take the bunny and play with with, uh, with it and the new girl, but the new girl acted weird around Bunny. It was also kind of suspicious that the new girl would talk to Ki. She even gave her the nickname Kitty because oh my Kiyu reminded her of one. Did she know about her quirk? Dumbass, you have cat ears. You have cat ears. So they were playing with uh, the bunny, not much of course, but then the new girl went away a little and told oh my Kiyu to go to fluting. It completely froze as well. He got a little scared, then 
I don't understand what's going on. I don't then either. Then the new girl quickly put her hand back down and the bunny crashed towards the floor with a loud thump. What the fuck? Key flinched and looked at the other girl. She had this weird smile on her face. When Key looked back at the bunny, there was a pool of blood beneath it. The new girl started walking towards the bunny. Stop, Omaki oh said. Wait a second. In the in the bunny part of this bio, you said you didn't know how the bunny died yet. What is this? That's true. What is this? We've been duped. We've been duped. Uh, Omaki oh said to the new girl quietly, but she didn't. Ki was scared. What was she gonna do? Hey, she shouted, but the girl didn't stop. Omaki oh then saw her raising her hand. She couldn't take it. I sad stop Omiki shouted and raised her hand. The girl stopped and was dead in her trap, not moving. Ki put her hand back down. What? She whispered quietly. The girl turned around and smiled at Ki, then started walking towards her bunny again. The girl crunched down and took the bunny by its fur, then dropped it on the floor again. Ki couldn't take it anymore and her eyes glowed a uh, vibrant red. Uh, oh, stop no. it, she yelled and ran towards the girl. She then dropped next to her and punched her away, but as she swung her hard on her hand, she saw blood. It then dropped to the floor. She looked back at the bunny and saw it's dead with being almost blood out. Hat hap just happened, she asked herself in the verge of crying. The new girl just looked at her and smiled darkly, then run away. Ki was confused and then she realized she was crying and started sobbing. After a while, she decided to bury the bunny because it was dead. After that, she realized what to do. There was still blood on the ground, but there was a mirror on the color of her eye. What? But there was a mirror in the color of her eyes was a pink and reddish one instead of her normal greenish bluish ones. Why didn't she say in appearance that her eyes weren't originally the same color that they are in the picture? Was that because of what happened today? She didn't know, but she was really tired. The next day, uh, she woke and saw that a lot of kids were sad. She went to them and asked what happened, but they ran away from her. What? Also, the room where the bunny was killed yesterday was locked. One of the workers took her away and asked her what happened, and she said the truth. And the walker gasped and put her away from all the other kids, so she was back to the part where the kids ignored her. But she wanted to know if the, her theory of transforming with transforming into animals was true, so she tried to transform into a bunny and it worked away from everyone, of course. So she realized that she could probably transform into an animal she was somehow involved in its death and touch of blood. But she didn't know what the thing was the blood and she didn't want to think about it. Anyway, a few days later, some weird man came to the orphanage. They wanted to adopt the new girl because they looked bored. The workers refused, and then they started, I attack everyone. What? Oh, my key transformed into a cat and tried to run away, but she was really confused, and she got distracted and ran into a closed room and transformed back into her human form. She also saw the new girl being dragged away by one of the men. To, go to, to door to the room she was at suddenly opened, and there was a man. He rushed towards her and grabbed her hand. She wanted to get away, but she couldn't. She got desperate and wanted to smack the man, and she did. But to her surprise, he fell on the floor. Why? She is- she's not even 13 at this point. She has no strength. Why? She looked at her hand, it was a paw. Okay, maybe it's because he- like, she scratched him? I don't know. But she wasn't fully a cat, because she only transformed partly. She didn't care at the moment. She transformed into cat fully. Well, that answers your question there. And ran away before the man stood up again. She started running away again and run into one of the rooms again. Then transformed into a human form again. She was really scared and didn't know what to do. But she couldn't hear a, a sud when she was in her cat form. Even if she was more comfortable as a human now. I just skipped to the end. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm upset. <laughs> because she wasn't as small. Then she then thought she could transform just partly her ears. So she tried and was... What? And then there were two cat ears on her head. Okay, so she wasn't born with the cat ears. Maybe she just has the cat ears, like, complete, like, all the time because she's like, Oh, I look cute, Nico, Nico, kind of stuff. She could hear better again and say, calm down a little. She heard some people coming and decided to hide behind being a dresser. A man came in and started to search for her. She didn't get why they were so obsessed with them. She thought Sick could just hide in here, but no, maybe she could, maybe she could try transforming into this... Uh, sap throw and fly away. She wasn't good at flying, but it seemed like the better option, so she tried it. The man noticed her and tried to wrench her in her bird form, but they couldn't. She bummed into a few things and managed to get out of the door and transform into a cat because she was better at that. She ruined in a place where most of the kids were, but when, but when she got there, they were all dead? What? She was really scared and suddenly started running again towards the door, but the men were chasing her again. But suddenly a big figure was in front of her. The figure then punched the two men and proceeded to win over all the villains that stayed. Omaki transformed back into her human form, keeping the ears because she was more comfortable with them. Then she looked at the figure again. It was All Might. 
He smiled at her and she smiled back. He looked so cool. You just, you just witnessed, or didn't witness, but you just had a bunch of villains break into the orphanage where you live and slaughter everyone. Just to find you. Uh-huh. Uh, the police took her to the police station and asked her a lot of questions. Apparently, none of the other kids survived and she was the only one. She was to go to a different orphanage, but she didn't want to go somewhere again. Then All Might came and said that he would adopt his -er. She was so happy. And why would he adopt a kid? Like, before he met, like... Before everything from the anime started happening, like, he was desperate to keep this a secret. Desperate. And kids are terrible at keeping yeah. secrets. Like, there's no reason why he would have adopted her. No reason. Ugh. She was so happy. She then learned about his secret, and he told her that he was really interested in her and her quirk. All Might wasn't home a lot because of his hero job, but he would also train with her like with Deku. She was also there when All Might tra trained with Izu-chan and would help him- No, that's stupid. When she went- she went to normal school as well, and a lot of the kids there liked her. They were really interested in her quirk and enjoyed the questions and attention. She then got to UA through recommendations early. I- I- okay, so understand. Like, even if you are like all- like, I just scream. Scream. Yeah, so that's it for the bio. Final thoughts. I don't know, I feel like this has the potential, the quirk of your character has the potential to be really good. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't really like any part of the backstory. Like, it's not wrong to have your character be orphan in an orphanage, but you have to understand, unless you write it really detailed really well, like, that's just a play for people's sympathy, and it's overused, and a lot of people are gonna point out that like, hey, there's a lot of over- like, it's overused. It's hard to actually get genuine sympathy. People are just gonna roll their eyes. Oh, of course she's an orphan. Of course she's this overpowered. Of course everyone loves her. Like, I- there's not a lot, in my opinion, that's totally, completely salvageable in this character. Even the quirk, I think, needs some work. And the writing, oh my gosh, I almost, like, I almost gave up halfway through that backstory. I was like, you know what, this, this channel is not worth reading that. I, please, please, understand, I'm not trying to bash you. If you're young, like, don't take this as like, oh, all my ideas are stupid and I should just give up. No. I want you to know, like, you should never give up. You should just take this and understand, okay, like, I have an idea. Like, I think it's really good. Other people might not like it. If you like it, you don't have to change anything. But, like, part of growing as, like, a creator is taking criticism and, like, being able to change things up. You have to- you have to take criticism and be okay with it. So I just- I hope instead of giving up, you just take this and maybe reach out to some people who you know who might be able to help you, like, with proofreading, with having ideas, like, go on YouTube, go on DeviantArt, look up tutorials, learn how to draw a little bit. Take some inspiration from the show itself on how to design a superhero costume, how her hair might look like, that kind of stuff. Alright, as for my final thoughts, I personally will have to disagree with Muffin. I think a lot of this character is actually salvageable, but that's probably because- I disagree. Uh, that's probably just because I'm- I'm an absolute sucker for rewriting and making things work. So I just, this entire time we've been reading this, I've just been getting ideas, reworking things in my head of how you could rewrite all of this to still make it the same or similar to what you already have, but make it a lot better well written. Does that make sense? It does, I still really do like this character. There was a lot in the backstory and a lot of this that is like not very well written at all and it just comes off as absolutely it's just, ridiculous. For me, part of it, a lot of it is illogical and also I feel like like, yes, like, her time learning her quirk is important, but, like, you don't just, oh, she got into UA, oh, she, like, she became friends with everyone, that kind of stuff needs written out. I really wish you would, like, condense this a little bit to explain, like, her quirk, if you're gonna stick with the orphanage, oh, she got adopted by all, like, you know, there was an attack, All Might saved her, and had sympathy with her, instead of, like, seeing how alone she was and how scared she was to go to a new orphanage, she was like, you know what? I'll take you <laughs> and like oh, my voice. and like write out how he trained her and like her getting into UA, her going through the process of getting into UA, her like training, her becoming a hero in class 1A. Write that out. That like 
besides just her learning her quirk, that is arguably one of the most important pieces in her story was, oh, she got into UA, write it out. Because I'm gonna be honest, like, I don't, I don't see it. But of course, like, I guess there are several people in class 1A that a lot of people have been like, how did they get into UA? How did they get into class 1A? So like, maybe, but write it out. I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> I think we've gone through pretty much everything that we can at the moment, so... That's it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. I'm Yuji. And I'm Muffin. And we are Constructive Criticism. We'll see you in the next video.